Hello there, I'm A. D. Hobbs, and um, well, it, it's November, and as you can see, I'm wearing a jumper because it's a bit cold. It's not nice sunlight though. Anyway, it's Friday the 13th, and I've had a, a very small piece of bad luck already on Friday the 13th. Well, there's a funny thing. Anyway, um, back to the point. Um, a good lady friend of mine, she asked me to review Showgirls. And at first I was a little reluctant, because the shows I do are quite clean cut. I mean, no strong swear words. I mean, nothing above PG level. So I was a bit reluctant to do it, but then I thought, well, I've done a review of Fifty Shades of Grey, you know. <laughs> so yes, it can be done. You can do a clean cut review of a very sexual film. Showgirls was released in um, 1995. And uh, it stars Elizabeth Berkeley. It's directed by Paul Verhoeven, a Dutch director, who's most famous for directing Basic Instinct. And uh, Elizabeth Berkeley starred in it. She was known for being in the TV show Saved by the Bell. And she didn't want to be typecast. She wanted to play a character totally different to her character in Saved by the Bell. Well, the character she plays is called Naomi Malone, who couldn't be more different, you know. A very uh, sexual person. Um... Uh, a bit uh, on edge, a bit of a nutcase to some extent, you know, she can snap just like that, you know, go crazy and have a, uh, go in a fit of rage, you know, so quite unstable, yes, not so bad once you get to know her, but uh, she can be very unstable, but this lady friend of mine, she said she loves the dance choreography, yes, they went all out on the budget for that to make the dance choreography perfect on the is the little stage, the big stage, the rehearsal bit, the massive epic set piece in Las Vegas, yes, they did go all out on the, on the dance choreography. But she said she didn't particularly like the character of Naomi Malone. I mean, when she pushed Crystal Connors down the stairs, that was going too far. That was too mean. So yes, Naomi Malone is a bit nasty, but how can I put this? Compared to most other characters, she's really nice. You, you know, you know where you stand with her. Now, the first time I saw Showgirls, um, I didn't like it. I thought it was terrible. I mean, yes, I was about 18, an adolescent, lots of beautiful women to gawk at, but the, I wasn't paying attention to the story at all. So yes, yes, I'll be honest, being a bit of a perv, I was 18. However, the second and I think it was about the fourth time I saw it, yes, there is loads of nudity in it, but when you get over the initial shock of the nudity and pay attention to the story, yeah, it is actually a half-decent story. It is quite good, yeah. It has a beginning, a middle and an end. Everything comes full circle at the end. So yes, it is quite a good story. I think Paul Verhoeven, he was doing an experiment. Normally, you can't have lots of nudity in a mainstream film. You can only do that in a porn film. So he was testing the limit. Can it be done? Can you have lots and lots of nudity in a mainstream film? No, is a simple answer to that. No, because <laughs> people won't openly admit they want to go and see a movie like that in a proper mainstream cinema. Showgirls bombed when it first came out, but it has it did gain a big subcult following, released on video and then later on DVD. So yes, it has made its mark. And a lot I remember people criticising it when it was brand new. What a ridiculous idea, lots of sex and lots of nudity in a mainstream cinema film. But wait a minute. This is by the guy that directed Basic Instinct about three years earlier. That was a blockbuster. It was huge. It was massive. It became iconic almost. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, the, the the idea worked in that one, but not so much in Showgirls. Yeah. Oh yeah. So my lady friend she told me uh, one of her favourite bits is the sex scene in the swimming pool, which is a very over the top sex scene. But then there are there is a <laughs> there are some very over the top sex scenes in Basic Instinct. So I guess the director was thinking, what? Right, how can I possibly top that? And the sex scene, it is bizarre, and <laughs> nobody's wiggling about so much, but then she is a bit of a nutter. She is a bit unstable, you know. <laughs> she gets over the top when she's angry, and she gets over the top when she's enjoying herself. So, so yes, yeah. But in a way, it's... Um, Paul, Paul Vero, even. Um, I think Showgirls got some Raspberry Awards for being a really bad film, and Paul Vero, even, is the only director ever to actually attend the raspberry ceremony. So yes, yes, he saw the funny side, he thought it was funny and everything, yeah. And um, also, Paul Vero even, he likes to do satire when he makes a film. Okay, I'll explain what I mean. Uh, a satire, I looked the word up in the dictionary, a satire in the broader sense means using uh, humour or irony 
to expose uh, someone someone for, for being stupid or for doing something um, corrupt and evil. So using humour to make a point, basically. And um, in other words, showing what corrupt people get up to behind closed doors. And we see this in Robocop, yes, the highly respected business. When we see behind closed doors, they're corrupt and evil. In Total Recall, he directed that. We see, um, yes, the, the, the go governors of Mars are made out to be the good guys on the news, but behind closed doors they're corrupt and evil. And we see that this Las Vegas show, highly respected and everything, but behind closed doors everyone's on the fiddle. So, so yeah, yeah, it's... Um, in other words, when Paul Verho even makes a film, he likes to um, show the culture how it actually is, as opposed to how it's perceived. How our culture is and how it's perceived are sometimes two separate things. And, um, yeah, the, the Naomi character, um, yeah, she is. <laughs> she gets first-hand experience of what it's like behind closed doors. But her dream job is to become a, a great dancer, you know. And she starts off in the Cheetah, which I, I think that's a, a brand of, of strippers, yeah. A lot of strip clubs called the Cheetah all over America. And she gradually, you know, gets better and better and better. And, um... The, the scene at the end is, is, is quite disturbing, yes, when um, her friend, her best friend Molly, gets to meet her favourite rock and roll star, and um, yeah, uh, it gets beaten up and then gang raped, which is really dark, really sinister. And then Naomi says to, I think he's like her agent, Zach, played by Carl McLaughlin, you know, get the police involved, this man must be arrested for what he did. And Zach says, no, we're not, not going to arrest him because he's worth so much money. You know, we'll turn a blind eye to him committing a crime because he's worth so much money. And um, now, now there is a scene now before when Zach, he, um, he orders, oh, one thing at a time. Basically, he turns a blind eye because he's worth so much money, which is, that, that's going too far. She knew he was a bit dodgy, a, a bit dishonest, but not, not as dishonest as that. I mean, there's different levels of corruption, isn't there? That's going much too far. And, yes, uh, Naomi decides to leave him. They're not an item anymore. And he, she decides to beat the hell out of the, the rock star, yeah. And, but because she's beating him up, she has to leave town. So she's living on the road again. So the story ends the way it started. Everything comes full circle. Now, the Carl McLaughlin character, there is a scene like halfway through the film when somebody upsets Nomi. He basically asks her for sex. And Carl McLaughlin, he says to the man, you know, he demands that he apologise to Nomi straight away. And then after they've both gone out of the room, he gets his mobile phone, phones him up and says, oh, I'm sorry about that. You didn't need to apologise. You know, so he, he's not... He, he's, he, he he just tells him that it was okay. I'm, I was just messing with you. I don't really hate you for doing that at all. <laughs> so so two faced. Is that being two faced, or is it just trying to make everyone happy, keeping everyone sweet? Well, <laughs> yeah, interpret that however you see fit. Now and and again, we see the rock star, this highly respected name. You know, big posters of him everywhere, but behind closed doors, he's a total bastard. Yes. <laughs> Is it okay for him to c commit rape like that? Well, according to Zach, yes, it is. Because he's worth so much money, he can't be replaced. Well, I, I disagree. I couldn't disagree more. It's not okay for a celebrity to commit, to commit a crime. They can be replaced. They're replaced all the time. If a celebrity ever steps out of line, he can be replaced. Simple as that. Oh, speaking of being replaced, yes. Crystal Connors, the great uh, Las Vegas queen, the, the head of this topless show, she gets replaced by, by Nomi Malone. And Nomi Malone does an outstanding job. She's the queen of Las Vegas, yes. So yes, the theme of being replaced comes up in the film as well, yeah. So would showgirls have worked better if there was less nudity or less, less sexual stuff? Well, it's a movie about strippers, for heaven's sake. Of course there's going to be nudity, yeah. So if you get over the nudity for goodness sake it's just a load of naked bodies have you never seen that before you know when you get over the nudity pay attention to the story it is quite good and um yeah crystal connors and Naomi malone they certainly have a bit of a love hate relationship <laughs> yes one minute they're good friends helping at the next they're at each other's throats yeah oh and something symbolic when Naomi gives zach a lap dance and then later they get very close indeed and have sex for real. So we see the fantasy of sex and then about an hour later see them having it for real, which is sort of symbolic in a way. And uh, Showgirls may have bombed, but 
A year later, Demi Moore starred the movie Striptease. That flopped as well. And then a year after that, The Full Monty came out, which was a blockbuster, a comedy about male strippers. So what does that mean? Sometimes people want to see a movie about strippers, sometimes they don't. I guess it depends how well the story is done. Yeah. And, uh, oh yes, one final note. I've never actually seen it. But there is a Showgirls 2. And from what I've been told, it's appalling, absolutely terrible. And um, it makes the first one look like a masterpiece, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think there was any need for a sequel. I mean, the way Showgirls ended, everything came full circle. It's all over, you know. Nomi isn't a stripper anymore, it's finished, you know. Is Nomi, is that name short for Naomi? Or is it a name that was just made up for the film? I think it was made up because, of course, she has a criminal record, so she has a name that's made up. Well, Elizabeth Berkley, the main star, she looks as sexy as ever in that film. She still looks really hot now. But, yes, yeah, she is incredibly sexy in, that, in, the, in Showgirls. So, yes, um, Showgirls, maybe there was too much nudity for a mainstream film, but it is quite a good story, and it shows... It shows the darker side of the entertainment industry. Okay, that's enough from me. I'm Anthony Hobbs, and I'm never bored.